Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews Now 2, and on today's video, we're showing you how to do a bass flash on the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi Fi. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we're going to show you how to do the BIOS flash using the BIOS flashback utility and a USB stick. So for this particular procedure, all you need is the motherboard itself. You don't need a processor, don't need any RAM, don't need anything. Literally, just the bare board, as you can see there, um, is useful to keep the box to actually keep it on when you've got it plugged in. You will require a power supply, so we've dug out the trusty Cylon 700, and obviously you'll need a USB stick to flash the BIOS. Also, you will need access to the internet uh, or another computer so you can download the actual BIOS from the internet, which is the first thing we're going to do. So grab your USB stick and follow along. So the first thing to do is to insert your USB stick into the computer. And this one's actually got some stuff on already, a Windows installation by the look of it. So what I'm going to do is going to right click on that drive. And I'm going to choose format. FAT32 is what it must be, and the default allocation size, and we'll get rid of the volume label, and click start. Obviously anything on the drive will be erased, so make sure that uh, there isn't any important data on there. We don't have any, so we're okay to click format. So once that's done, format complete, next part of the task is to actually get the BIOS. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the MSI site, so if we type in MSI, and start typing that and then type in MSI B550 Pro VDH Wi-Fi. I'll put links in the video description just to make life a little bit easier for you guys. Hopefully uh, you should find it a little bit easier. Make sure you do get the right version. There are a few versions of the board with slightly different details, so yeah, make sure you do get the right one. When you find the right one, uh, click on accept to accept the settings for the site if you haven't been there before. Then you can go down to support. Actually, before you do that, you can do a quick visual just to make sure that it is the right board. Take a look at the back and make sure that uh, all the ports look as they do on your physical motherboard. Once you're happy, click on support. Luckily for us, it goes straight into BIOS as it is. Now, the BIOS version on my board that I know of, because I've used the board previously, is version 25. So there is a newer version, so it'll be good to flash up to that anyway. Obviously, if you don't need to flash your BIOS, don't do it. If you need it for compatibility, then that is when you should do it, or if you've got a new processor, that kind of thing. So. To download it, click on the download icon on the side, and it'll ask you where you want to save it to. So I'm going to choose the desktop, and that shouldn't take very long at all. And when that's done, you can choose show in folder, and we've got our zipped file. So we're going to extract the file, or unzip it, into a folder. And if we go into the folder, there'll be two files, one of which is a text document, which gives you some instructions. But the one we want is this one, the 260 file. And now we have to rename this file. So we're going to rename it to msi.rom. Now, if you get to this point and you've still got the 260 on the end, what you'll need to do is to go into view and then choose file name extensions. Then what you can do is remove the 260 on the end or whichever number it is. It should just be msi.rom. So now we can copy or cut that file. I'll choose cut and then just dump that onto our USB drive. And that's it. Now we can eject the disk. So however you choose to do that, either remove it or click on the eject USB button at the bottom. And we're ready to go. Okay, so that is our BIOS downloaded onto our trusty USB. So what we need to do is to connect up the motherboard to power. It doesn't need anything else, just power. And in order to do that, you'll need the eight pin or four pin supplementary power supply. For this particular board, then the eight pin is definitely the way to go. You probably could get away with it with a four, but um, I would rather follow the manufacturer's instructions. So we're gonna plug that one in first of all. So that's the uh, eight pin supplementary CPU power connector. And the only other one we need is our standard ATX 24 pin power connection. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in also. So again, don't need any RAM or anything like that. We're absolutely fine with that. What I would suggest to do as well, which can be quite useful, is before you go ahead and do this, if you've maybe used the board with another processor or some other type of setup, it's always beneficial to remove the BIOS battery. By do that, just literally flip the 
the pin that holds it in and the battery should come out quite easily. So just take the battery out. And there is actually a CMOS reset switch right next to it. So just put your screwdriver across the two pins just to short it out and that will remove any of the settings in the board, such as boot settings, all that kind of stuff. Essentially, it's gonna reset it back to the factory defaults. So we've got our power connected. Now we need to do is to install our USB drive. Now, MSI in their wisdom, if you go to the actual manufacturer's website for this and also their uh, details page and the manual, it doesn't mention anything about where you do or where you put this actual stick. So just for those of you that aren't sure, you need to use a USB 2.0 part, which is this one here. At the bottom, you've got the keyboard and mouse, then you've got two USB 2s. Don't use the USB 3.0s, those won't work, or at least they've got limited reliability. So put it into the bottom of the USB 2 ports, make sure it's clicked in firmly. And then essentially, as long as your power supply is turned on, which I believe ours isn't quite yet, so power supply is now switched on, so we've got power to the board. So now what we need to do is to briefly press the BAS flashback button and the system should come to life and the USB light should come on. Also, be mindful that the fan on the power supply will come on as well, so make sure you've got it face up, not face down on your desk, because otherwise you'll suffocate the power supply. So, making sure everything's in and press the button. Now to start with, you'll get a flashing LED, which uh, hopefully you can see on there nicely. So what that means is it's actually reading the BIOS. Once it's happy it's done that, then you'll see some of the other lights come on on the motherboard, which if I angle this down a little bit, you'll see at the top there, we've got our LED coming on or going through the cycle of LEDs at the top. So do look out for those as well. Also, you'll notice that the LED speed will start flashing a little bit. So it's gonna flash a little bit faster than it did when it initially booted up. Currently, we're still on the CPU LED, which is absolutely fine because we don't have a CPU installed. So that means that the system is woken up, it's recognized it's not a CPU. Also, it's flashing the bar, as we can see by the rapidly flashing light. Now, this should continue for a couple of minutes. If, for any reason, it doesn't start flashing rapidly or faster than it did initially, then something is definitely wrong. You may need to change your USB device. You may have not renamed the file. You may not have formatted the actual USB into FAT32. All these things can potentially happen. So make sure you do set the device defaults to the USB stick when you provide the format. Sometimes formatting it in uh, another application, such as Rufus, things like that, can be quite helpful. But really, most of the time, as long as you do it and format the defaults, you should be absolutely fine. Again, this will take a little while to go, probably about three or four minutes, maybe five. Don't panic is essentially what you should not do. Just let it do its thing, chill out, go and get a cup of tea, and come back and you should find that all the lights have gone off. Now we're gonna carry on filming this, just so you can see what happens, and then we'll come back after for a discussion. Okay, so that is the BIOS flash done, and it took probably about the same amount of time to boil a kettle, which, uh, yeah, probably not much use to most of you, but it's about three and a half, four minutes, maybe five minutes tops. What we did notice is, uh, if you're watching the camera, we did speed it up as well. Don't want to drag you through all that. But when it gets to the very end, the LED turns off, and also you may find that your USB drive stops flashing. This drive actually has like a kind of in-use flash, so, it pulses on and off like an RGB type thing. So just to let you know this plugged in, when it's actually reading data, it flashes a different speed. So obviously do bear that in mind with your own drives. Yours may be slightly different, but essentially what it did is it turned off, the board itself kind of rebooted itself and is now in the kind of almost like the powered on stage as if there is a processor waiting to be put in. So the LED is on saying CPU LED and touching the south bridge. It's actually getting quite warm, so we're going to go ahead and turn it off. So you can take the USB out if you want to, first of all, but if not, just hit the power switch. Wait for it to go off, you'll find the lights go off, and then you can basically disconnect everything. But obviously, do bear in mind these components will get hot, so don't leave it unattended for too long, um, especially on a cardboard box, because you may start scorching things. So yeah, basically when that's done, you can then remove your power connections, 
and then you can go ahead and install the rest of your components. Now I know what some of you are going to be asking already, I can tell because I've done this before and I always get asked the same question, can you do it with components attached? Well the easy answer is probably. I don't know for sure, I've not tried it, I don't have a 5000 series processor to actually test with, so that really puts me out of contention for that currently. People have said that they've managed to do it on other boards, absolutely fine with components fully installed, actually with the system basically ready to go. So your mileage may vary depending on what components you're using. Personally, myself, I would suggest to make life easier, the easiest things to remove are probably things like the GPU and also the RAM. RAM is one of the things that the system will generally look for after a CPU and to try and start the boot process. Obviously, if you start doing it with a fully built system, you press a button, nothing happens, you try various configurations, nothing happens, then it is really simple just to pop out a few sticks of RAM and possibly the graphics card. Any bootable drives as well, I would suggest removing those. You don't necessarily have to remove the processor if you've got one installed already and you don't want to ruin your thermal compound, but certainly the manufacturer's recommendations and also from what you've seen in this video, it does seem to work absolutely fine on a completely bare board. So if you are considering doing it, essentially if you can, just take as much apart as you possibly can. Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful to you. If it has, don't forget to leave a like and all that kind of usual stuff. If you like this sort of content, then don't forget to click on subscribe and you can see more of this in your inbox on a regular basis. So I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.